Hey, what's up guys? Zach with Wired Customs and today we're going to be sewing up seat covers for a Model A. Now, this is gonna be a very, very simple like demonstration, not so much a how-to video. We just wanna show you how you could do this yourself, start giving you that idea, uh, 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 thoughts of, you know what, maybe I wanna save myself a lot of money and, and do it and not pay someone else to do it. This seat cover is, uh, the idea behind it is, uh, it was like a 40s uh, post-war seat cover for a Model A, military surplus type situation. Uh, maybe you're hot rodding a Model A to the late 40s style, and that's what this seat cover is all about. It's canvas, uh, it's you know rugged, it's something that you would have got a military surplus store uh, right after World War II. Uh, very traditional style hot rod. Um, just got home from the war, and they just wanted to hot rod the car they already owned uh, as cheap as possible. So this is very cheap. We're going to be spending less than 100 bucks for two seats and door panels. So what we have here is really just a cover to keep the springs from coming through the fabric. This protects the fabric that covers over it. Everything always has some kind of birch cover. Uh, this is a cloth, then there's birch underneath this cloth, and there's a little bit of old school like foam. Um, this is in decent shape. We're just trying to do a simple and easy cover. So I'm going to keep this and I'm just going to cover it over with my birch just in case a spring pops through one of these, something like that. This process is probably the easiest part of it. Uh, we want to have extra. We can cut off whatever we don't use. So that's just going to cut it around, be very like uh, extra about it, give myself a lot of extra room. Birch is super cheap, easy to cut, easy to find. So using <laughs> extra, throwing some extra away, not a big deal. I'm just gonna do a rough cut. I'm not doing to make a template or anything like that. All of this will get folded underneath and hog ringed to uh, the springs on the inside. And all we're doing is protecting our top fabric. Now, if you're going with a really fancy fabric, um, leather, this is fine. You put leather right on top of this. We're putting canvas right on top of this. So it doesn't really even need this birch, but I'm doing it just to clean it up a little bit, make sure it's, it'll last longer this way. Um, 
But if you have a really fancy fabric, uh, you could put a cheaper fabric over this so that fancy fabric doesn't get caught because this is, you know, this is rough and you could have a, a spot bunch up on you and be hard to stretch. But outside from that, this is typical, just straight birch leather or whatever you're gonna put over this. Now I got my little hog ring pliers and I got a box full of hog rings and I'm just gonna come down here and hog ring to the closest spring available. I don't wanna go over all the springs all the way down to the frame because we don't want this fabric to ever stretch because it'll just start peeling itself apart. So you wanna grab it by the uh, whatever's closest to it. So I grabbed it right there. And what I'm gonna do is just grab it from this side, pull it tight, grab it from the back side, then I'll do the sides. This part's always nice because it's very simple and uncomplicated. Now I'm gonna grab it from the other side. The idea is I don't want any wrinkles in this. So I'm gonna pull all the wrinkles out of it. And just make sure it's somewhat snug. This is gonna have to fold under. I'm gonna have to grab it from this side. So now we're gonna cut out the template for the seat cushion here. So what we're gonna do, this is the bottom of the seat. That's what's gonna get tacked. And this is gonna wrap all the way around. So the seat top only needs to be the very top edge all the way around, but the back needs to be long. Because on the back, we're gonna tip it all the way out, roll it underneath and tack it. So I'm going to make this template and I guess you could say I'm going to make the piece because I mean, we call it a template, but I'm actually going to make it. So I'm going to make sure the back is extra length here and I'll just cut off whatever I don't need. And like I said, sewing is like metal shaping. There's a lot of scraps in the end. What you don't want to do is do something too short and not have what you need. And I'm going to cut it down below this just to get it off the rolled fabric. Then I'm gonna cut it even tighter after that. So, just double checking my length. Let's make sure I have a, just excess in every direction before I cut it. So I have as much as I want off the back, so that's good. And for the sake of making other pieces, I always try to cut things out square not a circle it's just my it's my style you can do whatever you want to do just a recommendation there's my base and i'm going to go ahead and push this out the back as far as i actually want it to be so we're going to want to be able to wrap it all the way down and every edge is not we don't leave it rough we fold it and so every edge, every edge it has control. So I want enough to go all the way down and tack into the frame down here, but also enough to fold it over, sew it, then tack. I tack the fold, I tack the double fold of material. So that's about where I want that. I'm gonna start trimming this seat. Now, you could draw it out with a Sharpie, then put it down on the ground and trim it on the table or whatever you like to do. And that's usually what I like to do. So, I'm not gonna cut up to the edge. I'm gonna leave myself a good amount. So, this is the edge, and I'm gonna leave myself maybe 
half an inch to an inch even. If you're new at sewing, give yourself an inch. And uh, that's gonna be what we sew to the piece I already made here. So these two are going to have like an inch worth sewn together. So leave yourself a little bit extra to sew. Hopefully that makes sense, but I'll show you here in a second. So I'm gonna go way down here. This is gonna be what gets sewn. And I'm using a Sharpie because all these edges that I'm drawing on, you're never gonna see it. So we wanna get this edge accurate, get all my creases out, and actually cut it where I want to cut it. So I'm just cutting out this here. And I'm also going to use that fold it over and sew it on itself. No edge is a loose fabric edge. Every edge is sewn. Okay, so now I have my template a little bit more refined. This is gonna be the flap that comes down and uh, tacks into the wood at the bottom. So control every edge. This is gonna be the crease. I marked my crease uh, with my little Sharpie line here. So I'm gonna sew that. And I'm working this inside out. So what I'm doing, everything here is all the inside. So this is gonna fold over and I'm gonna cut a bunch of extra off right there and sew my seam on both sides. I got this as close to the edge as I can all the way around. So when I cut it, I wanna give myself an inch all the way around. And when I sew it up, that extra from both material, I can cut that all off together. So I'm starting to see everywhere that I need to sew now. So it's just bringing me in. I got my line a little bit more tighter to the edge now. So uh, now that the material sits more flat, I can get a better template. Some guys don't use the fabric for the templates, some guys use really cheap clear see-through fabrics but this is just a very simple uh, watered down process of just making some uh, seat covers at home for your model a. so now i'm going to cut this out about an inch away from my mark and i can just keep refining my template till it's right where i want it the idea is just knowing where everything's going to go because it's going to get sewn to this which is my wraparound piece and that's gonna be our little stitched area, just like that. And this is gonna fold down underneath and tack to that. So you can start to see how this is gonna shape itself. Okay, so this isn't a sewing 101 video, but I'm gonna show you just a couple things real quick in case you're looking for a sewing machine. So I do not have a reverse on my sewing machine. So here's what we do. So I'm gonna get lined up. And I also don't have uh, really variable speeds. This thing wants to go 100 miles an hour all the time, but this is just to get your stuff done yourself. I got this machine for free, a sewing machine shop shut down and they, they just wanted everything gone. I went up there and just got what I could use. My other sewing machines from 1934, this sewing machines from 1965, it's a mild upgrade for me. But to get the lock stitch, to get the string from pulling out, obviously I already have my machine all set up to sew and I have this nice, uh, thing on my knee here that picks that foot up but I'm gonna show you how to lock stitch it we can do this we can get a couple stitches in 
And when the needle's down, I'm gonna pick my foot up. I'm gonna spin this all the way around and uh, fold up your material so it's easier to work with here. So less material flopping around. And I'm just gonna walk it right back in the stitches I already made. You can see that with my hand in the way. My machine doesn't like to be spun by hand. I don't know why. And with the needle all the way down, spin it back around. And it's gonna get double lock stitched because now I'm going back over it again. But I'm actually gonna run it all the way down to my edge back here. And I'm gonna try to go slow, but this machine does not like to go slow. Still getting used to my new machine. Get down there to the end, get ready to lock stitch it again. Like I said, my machine does not like to go slow. When the needle's in, pick the foot up. 180 degrees. Go back down. Get my lot stitch going again. That's how you lock stitch it with one of these old machines like this. So now that I have this folded over, I wanted it. Time to move to the other side. All right, next step. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I am not the best sewer in the whole wide world, okay? But I can get stuff done. I can make it look nice and uh, keep us like a traditional hot rod thing. And I don't have to pay someone else thousands of dollars to do my interior. So how I do this part is I'm gonna line this up around the edge. I have my center marked for both pieces. So that's the center. And now I'm gonna line this up and roll it around the edge. And I'm actually gonna put bobby pins through all this. Now, a lot of the automotive upholstery guys don't do bobby pins. Uh, I use bobby pins just because when I'm sewing my, my machines really fast and I have a hard time holding the fabric perfect together as I'm sewing around edges. So the bobby pins just help me and uh, it still ends up with a good product. The downfall to that is when you're doing like really, really nice leathers and stuff like that, you want to avoid bobby pins but this is canvas this isn't going to hurt the canvas at all so i'm going to start with my center here get that lined up and this black mark the tight one here that's what i'm sewing that's the seam so all i have to do is just follow that as i go around now the great part about the way i do my templates and the way that i set everything up with the bobby pins is I can throw it back onto the chair and double check everything that I have going on. This is gonna be long enough to tuck up underneath and staple. This is gonna be long enough to fold on the inside. This is gonna be long enough to hide this seam. So everything is long enough. Everything looks like it's working out so far. And again, we make this inside out. Then we go to put it on the chair. We flip it the other way and all of these stitches and seams are this side of it. Okay, so now we're down to the cool part where we're actually making this cover. And this is also the most important part. So while I'm sewing this line that I created here, and you can see one flaw that I made, I put the bobby pins in the wrong way. I do that to myself all the time. So don't stick yourself. I like when I do it the other way. I have the uh, buttons on my side of it. But anyways, what we're gonna do is try to make the underside material as flat as possible as we're sewing this. So when I go around the turns, I'm going to slow down as much as I can and maybe even sew a lot of it by just spinning my dial here. But this is the hard part when I get down here, trying to make this as flat as possible. Let's get this going. It 
the key here is control of the material. And I'm going to trust my mark over here, even though I don't like it now that I'm sitting at the machine. I think I curved back around the steel, uh, you know, the steel support in the seat. So I'm going to go ahead and just trust my mark and get this going into a lock stitch. Now this type of sewing machine is an industrial machine that you could find anywhere. Facebook marketplace, stuff like that is what I mean. And the problem with it, once you start sewing a lot, is that the neck is so short. I wanna put this, like I couldn't sew this in this direction. I always set all my templates up to sew it from out here because my neck isn't long enough. I'll be bunching up material over here and that can actually mess up uh, the progress so One of the guys that taught me how to sew, <laughs> he would sew really, really fast. And what he would tell me was, the faster you sew, the straighter your line is. So I do agree with him. It's just getting to that point is the, the hard part. So now that I got the seat made, I can cut away all this excess here because this is going to fold up on the inside and uh, give you some lumps under, underneath the fabric here. So.
All right, so here is our first cover uh, for the seat bottom here. Uh, got a lot of lint from this, so once we get it all the way together, we'll vacuum it down really, really good. But I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, this crease here is just from the fabric, how it was folded in the mail for a long time. That will come out and uh, we'll steam it a little bit at the end just to get rid of a couple wrinkles uh, just from it sitting in a box for a long time. But I think that turned out pretty well. So far, I think we have the fabric, this, some cushioning. And we have like $100 invested in all of these seats. So about $100 excluding the sewing machine, of course, uh, uh, invested in these seats. That's pretty cheap to be able to do that at home yourself. Now let's do the top seat. Now this back piece would have to be done in three pieces because if you curled it all the way around and you just had one piece on the back, um, especially this thick fabric, we're not gonna have a smooth transition. There's gonna be creases and folds here. So what we're gonna do is have this outside piece here as one piece, the side piece as one piece, then the back piece as one piece, unless you have like a back board, something like that, that can be tacked in. But this is all steel on the back of this, so there's nowhere to tack it in really. But just so you can see for different types of seats, that's how we're gonna make this pattern. And of course, since it's just this simple style fabric, simple style seat, I'm just gonna throw this up here and do like a rough trace out. And I'm gonna cut it, leave myself one inch of extra fabric around. Uh, so I can sew that together Then I'll have one strip here One full back piece And I'm gonna sew that all together and it's gonna slide down and if you remember if you took these seats apart yourself Our tack strip is right here So the front piece is gonna fold in back and tack the top piece is gonna fold down and tack So this is where our sewing seam uh, brings everything together. That's our opening. So that's how we're going to slide it down over the piece and that's how we're going to close it back up. So when I make this piece, I want the bottom piece to be exaggerated, very long. All right, I'm gonna put this little support board on here just so if they grab the seat, you don't wanna push through the fabric right here. And I'm gonna turn our cover inside out. Slide it on and see how everything is starting to look. So let's get this on here. It's okay if it's tight, that's a good thing if it compresses it just a tad. And I'm just trying to get it over that plastic guard or that old guard for the back without it sliding out of place. there and I could probably staple this on now from here a good clean cut
tucked in there on both sides. All right, so there we have it. The seat is done. We sewed it all ourselves. Save us a, a lot of money, material-wise. We're under uh, under a hundred bucks on materials. If you bought a sewing machine to do this yourself, uh, sewing machines like six hundred ish. Uh, make sure you get one um, that's industrial and not just a commercial one. Uh, the industrial one, you'll be able to do way more materials. Um, the one that you just get at a local fabrics. So, you know store that you just put on top of a table uh, it's not going to sew through such thick stuff some leathers if you wanted to try this doing leather so um, this is not complicated that's what I love about Model A's they're super simple start to finish uh, whatever you want to do to a Model A it's the perfect thing to take time and learn everything learn how to do the motor learn how to do transmission learn how to sew make your own um, seat covers so uh, if you wanted to do original seat covers uh, it would be the same process except for you'd probably be a little bit more picky on where you sewed and how you made your uh, panels and sewed them together but this is just a simple uh, 40s style seat cover and uh, it's made out of canvas like you got back from World War II and there was a lot of military surplus we just made it out of military surplus that's the whole idea out of this one so if you have any sewing questions by all means put them down in the comment section and uh, I hope this was just a nice demonstration, not so much a how-to video, but just to get an idea, uh, make you start thinking about this kind of stuff. Maybe you could do it on your own ride and not pay someone else to do it. If you did it, obviously you'd save a lot of money. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, get your shift together.